Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide. Mohammed Niaz with you. Today we're gonna see how to set up pass through authentication. So, what is a pass through authentication? Pass through authentication allows your users to sign into both your on premises application, that means your local application, and cloud based application using the same password. So, it's a hybrid identity authentication solution. So this feature provides your users a better experience like uh, less passwords to remember and which reduce the high TL plus cost because your users are less likely to forget how to sign in because of they just need to remember one password at the end. So in this video, we're going to cover what is pass through authentication, how pass through authentication works and how to set up pass through authentication. Then we're going to see how seamless single sign on works, how to configure and validate seamless single sign on. Let's understand what is Active Directory pass through authentication. As your AD pass through authentication allows your users to sign into both on premises and cloud based applications using the same password. This come as a requirement. For example, an organization have local Active Directory and a fire server and they use Exchange Online Office 365 for email services. In this case, Office 365 works with Azure AD. At the same time, your file server works with the local Active Directory. Instead of going to two username and password, Azure Active Directory pass-through authentication helps you to configure a hybrid identity solution by that way your users get a better experience with single username and password. Microsoft offers three methods for hybrid identity solution. Password hash synchronization, which we already discussed in the previous video. And this video is for Azure AD pass through authentication. And in the coming video, you will see ADFS, federated authentication. So Azure AD pass-through authentication provides a simple password validation for authentication services. You install a service agent in your on-premises. It can be an Active Directory server or any other server. So whenever your cloud application requests for authentication, Azure AD validate it from on-premises Active Directory. Organizations who have a strict password policies, they can choose hybrid identity solution pass through authentication method because the password validation not happened in cloud. So now you know what is Azure AD pass through authentication. Next we're going to see what is happening when you install a Azure AD connect and configure it for pass through authentication and how Azure AD pass through authentication agent initiate its communication with Azure AD. So in the first part, we're going to see what, how the installation and registration going to work. Uh, I will explain to you uh, the theoretical part. Then I will explain you how Azure AD pass through authentication agent initiate the communication. After that, we will see the demonstration on how to set up Azure AD connect for pass through authentication. In the first part, we're going to see what is happening when you install or when you register AD connect with pass through authentication. So after you run the installation of authentication agent, it register with Azure Active Directory. Then Azure Active Directory gonna assign a certificate to identify. So a digital identity certificate to the authentication agent so that Azure AD can use a secure communication channel with your authentication agent. And this registration also binds the authentication agent with your tenant so that uh, Azure AD know which authentication agent is authorized to handle password validation request for your tenant. And this process repeat with the new authentication agent that you install for high availability. Now let's understand a bit more in detail about how the authentication agent registration process uh, going to work. So the first step is you need to sign into Azure AD Connect 
with your global administrator so that the authentication agent get an access token so it can use or it can work or communicate with Azure AD on behalf of a global administrator. Once you enter with Azure AD credentials and it get a token from Azure AD, then the authentication agent generate a key pair, a public key and a private key. After that, authentication agent gonna send a certificate signing request which is a part of the registration of this authentication agent with Azure Active Directory then Azure AD register your authentication agent and provide a digital identity certificate which is issued by Azure AD Certificate Authority Azure AD stores the public key of authentication agent in an SQL database in Azure which only Azure AD has access to it. And the certificate which issued by Azure AD is stored on the on-premises server in, in the Windows certificate store. And those certificate gonna use by the Windows authentication agent and updater application for the communication with Azure AD. So these are the initial steps that involved when you install and register Azure AD authentication agent. Now let us see how the authentication agent initialize after the installation. Initialize in the sense how it gonna start communicating with Azure Active Directory. So in the first step Azure agent makes an outbound bootstrap request to Azure AD and this is made over port 443 over a mutually authenticated HTTPS channel. And it will use the same request that and it uses the same certificate that we used in the previous uh, installation step. Now Azure Active Directory responds uh, by providing an access key to a Azure service bus that is unique to your tenant and that is identified by your tenant ID. So now authentication agent that we installed in our on-premises makes a persistent a continuous connection outbound HTTPS connection to the queue. So now there is a continuous outbound connection exists between authentication agent that you installed in your on-premises and Azure AD for your tenant. So now any request from a web application or a cloud application goes to Azure Active Directory, have a communication channel ready to retrieve and handle password validation. And one important thing that you need to understand here is Azure AD doesn't make any inbound connection. An outbound connection, a persistent outbound connection exists between your authentication agent and Azure AD in the beginning of authentication agent initialization. So the password validation is happening through this secure channel. So Azure Active Directory doesn't make any inbound request to your authentication agent. Now we're going to see how pass-through authentication works when a user try to sign into Outlook web application or any cloud applications. So in the previous two slides, you saw what are the initialization steps involved and what are the steps involved when you register and uh, install Azure AD authentication agent. So here, a user tried to sign in to Outlook web application. He get a web page I like to enter username and password. He enter his username and password and click submit. When the user click sign in, Azure AD get a password validation request from the cloud application contains password and a username. Once Azure AD received a password validation request from a user, Azure AD retrieve the public key that is stored in the SQL database for authentication agent registered on your tenant. So once it get the public key, it encrypt the password with uh, the public key. Then it gonna put this password validation request on service bus queue. That is a persistent connection access to between the authentication agent and Azure AD. We explained it in the initialization uh, slide. 
So Azure AD gonna put this password validation request on the service bus queue. This is a persistent communication channel. So authentication agent gonna retrieve this password validation request from Azure service bus queue. Then it decrypt this password value using the private key that is stored in the Windows uh, certificate store. Then authentication agent attempt to validate the username and password with local on-premises active directory and the result sent back to Azure AD success, failure or password has expired. So this is how password authentication works. Let's log into Azure portal first. Then you can see Azure Active Directory portal in the left side favorites or you can search for Azure Active Directory. Choose Azure Active Directory. Now you can see Azure AD Connect. This is the interface where you configure hybrid connectivity synchronization. Let's download Azure AD Connect first. Once you complete the download, log into your Active Directory server or any other server joined to domain controller, then kick off the installation. To install, double click on the downloaded setup. Agree with the license terms, then click continue. Here you have to choose customize option for pass through authentication configuration. Install the required components. It may take a few minutes to complete. Then choose pass through authentication and enable single sign on at this point. Then click next. Here you have to enter your administrator credential, global administrator credential for Azure portal. Then click next. Now you are connected with Azure AD. You have to add the directory that you want to synchronize with Azure AD. So enter your local administrator credential or any special account which have a privilege because this account gonna use for the synchronization with Azure AD. You have to be verified with your domain name that's already done then click next if you are not planning for any kind of a domain or OU filtering then choose the default options and click next and complete the wizard you can leave this optional features unchecked unless you have a plan to do any kind of migrations and this demo is actually a part of a hybrid deployment of exchange so that I just selected the options that I required for the migration if you are doing this for any kind of other projects and if the optional features are not necessary for you then uh, leave it unchecked. Click next and enable single sign on. For this you need to enter your domain administrator credentials again then click next and then click install to initiate the configuration. Now the installation and configuration has completed. Let's go to our Azure AD portal to verify the installation. For that you just need to refresh the Azure AD portal and go to Azure AD Connect. At this point you can see pass through authentication enabled and similar single sign on enabled. And you can also see the IP address that your domain connected or your AD agent connected to Azure Active Directory. Now let's see how seamless single sign-on works. For example, a user tried to access a web application Outlook web app and user get a sign-in page, he enter his username. Then using JavaScript in the background, Azure AD uh, send an unauthorized response and ask uh, the web browser to provide a Kerberos ticket. The browser forward this request to Active Directory and ask for 
a Kerberos ticket for Azure AD SSO account, which is an account created during the installation of a seamless single sign on with Azure AD Connect. So, Active Directory is going to find this uh, computer account and it return a Kerberos ticket to the browser uh, after encrypt with the computer account secret. So, it is an encrypted uh, secure communication. The browser forward the Kerberos ticket it acquired from Active Directory to Azure AD. Azure AD gonna decrypt this Kerberos ticket with the previous shared key and after evaluation Azure AD returns a token back to application or ask the user to perform additional uh, proofs such as uh, multi-factor authentication. To apply single sign-ons to groups of users and computers, we need some group policy work. So let's go to group policy and configure the requirements for seamless single sign-on. For that, go to your group policy management editor. So go to your default domain policy, then now you get the group policy management editor. From this, go to policies under user configuration, then go to administrative templates, then go to Windows components, then navigate to Internet Explorer, then choose Internet Control Panel, then Security Page, then select Site to Zone Assignment. First, you have to enable site to zone assignment list. Then you need to enter some values for that. Now go to Intranet zone. Click show under options. Then enter the values. Then apply. Then click OK. Then find out allow updates to status bar via script then enable it then click ok finally go to preference then expand window settings then click on registry then right click and enter a new registry item then enter the following. All these are texted well in the description of the video. So you don't need to worry. You can copy and paste all these things from the description of the video. Now we're done with the requirements related to group policy for seamless single sign on. The seamless single sign on configuration what we did in the a group policies are not enough to work with Mozilla Firefox. So to configure the seamless single sign-on with the Mozilla Firefox, you need the additional configurations and we're going to see that now. Open your Mozilla Firefox, then enter about full call and config, then accept the warning risk, then enter the following, right click modify, then enter the URL string, then click OK. That's all to do with Mozilla Firefox. Now your Internet Explorer and Mozilla Firefox are ready for seamless single sign-on. Now we finished with all the requirements for seamless single sign-on. So now it's time to verify seamless single sign-on configuration. For that, log into your domain joint computer with your username and password. I'm logging with accounts which is one of the user in the local active directory and synchronized with Azure AD. Once you are in, go to Internet Explorer. Then try to open any of your web application. Here I'm going to use myapps.microsoft and I just entered my username and password and you see what is going to happen now. Click next. You can see it is trying to sign you in without asking or without prompting for the password. So this is how it's going to work with seamless single sign-on. 
Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, subscribe our YouTube channel.